placement of riches at that five spot for UConn, but the matchup in the interior is going to be tremendous. Great big men. Take a look at our starting lineups there presented by Jeep. There is only one, but great guard play as well. And Jordan Hawkins and Chuck Harris, underrated matchup in this one. Especially Hawkins. He has taken a big leap as a sophomore, as an outstanding three-point shooter. And Chuck Harris, he's led Butler in scoring each of the last two seasons. Had a 32-point performance a couple of weeks ago. Those two guys are going to have to fill it up from beyond the arc. Butler. On a four-game winning streak, UConn has yet to lose this year. 11-0, number three in the country. Sonogo and Bates ready to tip it off, and UConn collects, and they go on offense first. It'll be absolutely vital that Manny Bates stay out of foul trouble. You better believe the ball's going to go inside to Sonogo, but can Manny Bates stay on the floor is a huge storyline to watch. UConn's first possession and now a three. No good. Hawkins first shot. The glass is going to be critical tonight as well. Area where UConn usually excels. So Butler is going to have to have all hands on deck. Rebounding the ball, keeping the Huskies off the glass. It took a little while for the clock to start as we began this ball game. It took, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 seconds into the first possession for the clock to start. Dan Hurley gets his first glass of water. His Huskies playing as well as anybody in the country. They've already got some key victories. Took down Oregon, took down Alabama for their first loss. Iowa State suffered their first loss at the hands of UConn as well. Go back to this clock issue that we're talking about. Not running for, again, a, a good amount of time here. Yeah, able to have a couple of ball reversals, move the rock, and then Hawkins missed three, but plenty of time went off the clock there without it starting. But you, you're right. UConn's off to a great start. I mean, they've won every game by double figures. They have dominated the competition. They're ranked third in the country, but they're number one in the net. They're number one in Ken Palm. This is arguably the best team in the country. And it's really a rebuild for Danny Hurley. You bring back Jackson Jr., Sonogo, and Jordan Hawkins, but really hit the transfer portal hard and brought in two freshmen, Caravan being one of them and Klingon being another. And every newcomer has come in and made an impact. I just love the way this roster fits together personnel-wise for UConn. It took some time off, now time correct with 1927. It took 19 seconds off of the game clock. And Butler can continue their first offensive possession. Very efficient shooting the basketball, shooting better than 50% on the year, 15th in the country. Bates working on Sonogo. He's got to go with it. And the shot clock violation opens up the first offensive possession for Butler. Thad Mata back at Butler. He's only lost one time in this building. 19 and 1 is his career record at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Great to see Thad back in the yeah. coaching ranks. Yeah, you and I were talking. His resume, one national championship game appearance, two Final Fours, four Elite Eights, six Sweet Sixteens, eight conference titles. He is a big-time coach. Good duck under that time by Jaden Taylor. Andre Jackson really heating up that basketball. That's how UConn wants to play. Physical, on the ball, beat you up. Butler's got to be able to handle that. There's Harris, and his jumper no good, Sonogo with his first rebound. It's a good example of UConn defensively, their identity, just eating up the ball, making you uncomfortable. Newton did a good job, Jackson did a good job. And those two minutes gone by, Sonogo trying to create some space. Bates is right there with him, but Sonogo too strong. Excellent use of the pivot, not panic, just until you feel comfortable and getting a shot off, but Bates is really difficult down there. He does it without fouling, really long, really active, good timing. This whole Butler team does a great job defending without fouling. Third best in the country, average just over 12 fouls a game. As Nikosius drills his first shot. And he's off to such a good start this season. He's really done a nice job passing the ball, but he's shooting it well, especially of late. 42% from beyond the arc for Simas Lakosius. He took one away from Sonogo. Second turnover for the Huskies. The 
looking for a paid touch. Here comes the double from Sonogo. And Bates threw it into the fifth row. Sonogo against Bates again. This is the matchup you wanted to see down low. Well, these two guys battling. And Bates, this is perfect. This is all you can do. Make him work. Make him work. Don't bail him out with a foul. Make him hit a tough shot. It's going to be crucial for Bates to do his work early in wrestling for post position. I think that's an area Sonogo has really improved in not wrestling the whole possession, but picking and choosing his times to disengage, wait for the ball reversal, then seal. He's just really improved as a post scorer, which oftentimes means doing your work early. Tough shot. And one of the things we talked about. How this game was going to be officiated with the size that's down low. First conference game for both of these teams. They'll let them play the first three minutes plus. Into the corner, Hunter Jr. Good offense though. The coach just withdrawn a defender, kicking to the opposite side of the floor. Hunter, the transfer from Purdue. There's a three caravan short. Drive. Manny Bates tried to clean it up, couldn't do it. Here comes Hawkins and the Huskies. And it's thrown out of bounds. Boy, these officials, they're letting them play early. Which is interesting for Butler because it's good because you're so short-handed because of injuries. You don't want to get into foul trouble. But that also plays right into how UConn wants to play. UConn wants to play physical, and UConn has tremendous depth as well. Three turnovers so far for UConn. Butler's been active. But it was interesting, as you pointed out, that Mata told us at shoot-around. It's going to be important for Butler to not get caught up in that physicality and just play their style of game. That's what UConn wants you. They kind of want to bait you into the street alley, into a fight, because that's where they're really comfortable. Hawkins just picked up his first personal. First foul called on either team. Sonogo went for the strip. Bates to Lukosius for three. Got another one. Well, you said it. Sonogo goes for the steal. It creates the rotation kickout three for Lukosius. If you're going to go for a steal on the perimeter, you better get it, or it's going to be five on four going the other way. This Butler team really struggled from beyond the arc last year. Third best in the Big East so far this season. Newton now tries his hand at a three. Offensive rebound, Sonogo in a fresh 20. Sonogo goes down low. Somehow amongst the trees now, Caravan. Finally pulled down Chuck Harris. Here come the Bulldogs. Bodies on the ground. Butler maintains possession. Lacocious. Not this time. UConn one for six from the floor to start. Caravan went up against Bates. His first block of the night. A little preview of what Bates can do defending the rim. He's got at least one block in every single game, three or more in eight. Bates isolated turnaround jumper. Pure. Underrated offensive player, too. He has expanded his game upon arriving in Indianapolis. What a shot by Andre Jackson to silence the Hinkle crowd. With just his sixth made three of the year. Not known as a three-point shooter, but does a little bit of everything else. It's a big shot to sit this crowd down. Floater too strong. It ended an 8-0 run for Butler. And now Newton short. Shooting wolves continue. This can be a tough place to shoot for whatever reason, Nick. Yes. Taylor and an offensive foul. To a break here at Henkel.
But the big man, Manny Bates, off to a good start. Flexing his muscles in the interior. Look him come off his man. Block Caravan right in. Perfectly done. You used the graphics the way that you were supposed to. Excellent. I appreciate well it. I appreciate it. You know, it's the Big East opener. you got to bring your A game in a variety of levels there. Well, you've done it very well. I appreciated that greatly. The attention <laughs> to detail. Butler's out there shooting a couple of big threes. Lacocious has six. Bates with a tough turnaround. And you know, UConn just 2 for 10 to start. Shooting almost 50% as a team. 23rd best in the country. We credit to Butler's defense. Jackson turnaround jumper. Followed his shot. Fresh 20 for UConn. For Butler, you got to continue to stay disciplined on Jordan Hawkins. Cannot step off him. Haven't given him too many rhythm threes early. Sonogo going at Bates, and he got the roll and a chance for a three point play. Well, how physical is Sonogo in the paint? It's just going to be challenging, especially Bates playing one on one in the post. You have you got to have guys come in there and make Sonogo uncomfortable. And Bates picks up his first personal foul. But you see, you see the power. And he just displaces Bates. Gets him under the rim. Little jump hook for Sonogo. As you mentioned, as we came on the air, Sonogo, the Big East preseason player of the year. Sometimes that moniker is given and not lived up to. He has lived oh. up to it and then some in the first month and a half. He has been outstanding. Everything offensively starts with dealing with Sonogo in the post if you're playing UConn. And Dr. Taylor, his jumper is pure. Been arguably the most consistent Bulldog. Been in double figures for every game this season except one. Taylor's taken a big step forward as a sophomore as well. 16 points for Jaden Taylor in 25 minutes in the win at Cal last time. There's Hawkins. Nothing but backboard for one of the better shooters in the country. And he's much better catching and shooting than coming off the bounce. Corner on the drive. Hawkins with the rebound. Hunter had a double double his last time. Jackson tries another three. Sonogo with another offensive rebound. And UConn is within one. Five offensive rebounds already for the Huskies. And that's the beauty of Sonogo and how he gets points. Sure, you got to run sets for him and get him post ups, but he can run the floor, he can offensive rebound and get points that way. Harris finding his way through the paint. And Jeff, we were here at noon. And there was one dude in here getting shots up, and it was Chuck Harris. You put in the work, it shows in the game. That's a both shoot arounds we did. Left, came back, and who was still shooting? Yeah. Harris shooting all day. Chuck Harris, he never left. Hawkins ripped it away that time from Jaden Taylor. Back to a one-point game. I love that for Hawkins. As a three-point shooter, Jeff, sometimes it's good to go get you an easy one. Go crash the glass. Go get a layup. Now the next rhythm jump shot you get, you're in a rhythm. Because you are on the board scoring. See the second chance points there. Six already for UConn. Paint touch. Bates. And on the end line... Forces a turnover. It's just the second for Butler, but Sonogo is starting to flex his muscles. And UConn Hurley's tenure so far, after two fantastic final seasons at Rhode Island, he has brought that winning culture to UConn. And I think this is arguably his best offensive team since he's taken over at UConn, and it still has that defensive prowess. So it's a complete team is UConn. Is he clinging on the floor for the first time? Concaterra also getting some run. Transfer from San Diego. Get to the freshman. Clinging. And Harris knocked it out of bounds with five seconds left on that shot clock. First conference game for Donovan Klingon. Yes. Lights are a little brighter. Absolutely. And again, it's amazing. You go to Sinego off the bench. You bring in Klingon. Three on the clock here. Newton looking for help. Caravan. And another offensive rebound for UConn. Concatera lost it on the way up. Still plenty of time. There's Newton looking for help. 
Pocatera, his three short. Klingen pulls it down. And Klingen missed a couple of shots. It's going to be a cylinder violation on Donovan Klingen. Boy, he is low. He is enormous. Seven foot two freshman. And that's the right call. Ball still on the rim. But offensive rebound has become a big issue right now for Butler. UConn, excellent. And they smell blood. They're attacking every offensive rebounding opportunity right now. For Klingon, it's his first missed shot in two games. He'd only missed one shot total in his last two games. He's not just big, he's skilled. He really has a good feel down there. Klingon pulled that one down. Tries his three and he's good. First late of the game for UConn. Been a stud transfer out of East Carolina. He was second team All AAC last year, and he's experienced. He started 65 games for East Carolina, and he has fit in seamlessly here for Coach Hurley's squad at UConn. Had a triple double against Buffalo earlier this season. There's a three. And too strong, and UConn controlling the glass. Three ball in transition, Naheem Ali. Another transfer coming in and making his presence felt out of Virginia Tech. It's an 8 0 run right now for UConn, better than two and a half minutes. And still dry from the floor, Butler. Klingen brought it down. Still plenty of time. Deep three, no good. Well, if you have an on-target pass, Klingen's got a dunk, but the loud is just airing enough. Extra pass. Taylor for three. Can't ask for a better low. Aline, another three in and out that time. And Caravan somehow comes away with a loose ball. Already eight offensive rebounds for UConn. Figured that was going to be an area where UConn had an advantage. I mean, Butler, not the biggest team. They're not overly gifted in the size department. Klingon pulls down number nine. Well, they're defending forever at the Bulldogs. Dumped it off to Klingon. Nice vision from Calcaterra. Big time pass from Calcaterra. That was threading the needle. And this is where depth matters. You know, Aline's come in and made his presence felt. Calcaterra's made his presence felt. Klingon's got some offensive rebounds in the bucket. So you're able to go to your bench and get production. Taylor right into the teeth of that defense and Klingon rips down another board. He's played a grand total of four minutes. He's already got five rebounds. Concaterra no good. Another offensive rebound. Caravan. They foul down low. They will get Klingon there. Great vision from Joey California. Concaterra. <laughs> Look at Joey C, Joey Calicaterra, Joey California, call him Joey Dime to cling it. An area where sometimes coaches can give you schematical adjustments, sometimes it's about just putting a body on a guy and go getting a rebound. UConn has more offensive rebounds than Butler has total rebounds. Ten well, to nine. And where that manifests itself, UConn has 11 more field goal attempts. That's where all those turnovers, offensive rebounds, you just get more shots on goal to stick with the World Cup promo you just had there. You got a better chance of scoring. Got to have shots on goal. That's it. Bates going on Sonogo looking for help. Lukosius for three. Got the hot hand early. He's missed his last two. Here's Thomas on the floor for the first time for Butler. Having a good run as a first-year freshman. Getting an opportunity. And he's athletic, so I think he can help with the defensive glass right now for Butler. Loose ball was out there, felt like forever. 
Six minutes to go in this first half. So no goes. Jumper is no good. And there is Thomas who corrals that loose ball. Up ahead, Butler had numbers. Hunter lost it. Lukosius has it. And a foul. Basketball felt like it was a hot potato there for a moment. Hassan Diara picks up his first foul for UConn. And I still like getting Manny Bates post touches. Playing through him. Good things happen. Bates hits the jumper from the elbow. Very good 15 foot jump shooter. Got pretty form, and he can step out. Makes him that much more difficult to guard. Felt like was a little underutilized at NC State. Comes here to butter a much bigger role, especially on the offensive side. Low back. Sonogo isolated, turn around and air ball. The Bates effect. Go right back to him. He's got a mismatch. To Hunter for three. Boy, can't ask for better offense than that. And maybe Bates finding that double team, but defensively doing a good job on Sonogo. One on one in the post, no help coming. Walls up. That's a shot that Sonogo can make, but it's over the length of Bates. And he led the ACC in blocks, Jeff, two years in a row at NC State. This is an elite rim protector, is Bates. Hawkins on the drive. Sonogo, another offensive rebound for UConn. Shooting very well here. I mean, Butler one for their last nine. UConn one for their last ten. You know, Bates never got the block, but certainly affects how people operate down low. No doubt. Coming off Sonogo, just his presence can alter the shot at the ten. Bates heads. To the bench for a moment, and Jalen Thomas on the floor for the first time as a Butler Bulldog. Battling some injury problems, to say the least. And he's got the assignment on Sonogo. And an offensive foul as Sonogo created some space. Yeah, and Jalen Thomas, pulmonary embolism, and been a tough road for him. But he's getting his first minutes as a Butler Bulldog, but he played in the NCAA tournament a year ago. He's a big-time shot blocker at Georgia State. Great to see him on the floor. It's important if he can spell Manny Bates just for a few minutes. His first game action since August. When Butler went overseas. Taylor. And now Thomas, his jumper. Really too strong at Sonogo right in his face. Five point lead for UConn. What does this feel like a Big East conference game or what? No doubt. Sonogo went right at Thomas. Hey, first game back, go deal with the Big East Bruce Houston player of the year. Not easy for Thomas. But Sonogo, really, really good post move there. And it's out of bounds off of Butler. Seven point lead for UConn. Tis the season here in Indy. The blast today. 11 offensive rebounds in all for the Huskies. Bates back in there. And Ali Ali getting his first appearance as a Butler Bulldog today as well. Sonogo pulled it down. Sonogo missed his tap in good. He got so good at that. Those high low looks where Sonogo gets his defender up the floor and Jackson or various. Huskies can throw it over the top for Sonogo to finish. But, uh, it's great to see Ali Ali out there. There he is. And he got his shot blocked by Hawkins. But a foul on Hawkins. 
Again, going back to Sonogo, showing off his skills. This is what a staple in UConn's offense this year, where they get a lot of motion and it gets to a high low, where Jackson is really good at throwing it into the post, gets him up the floor. Sonogo's able to catch, finish. And then Ali Ali, the Akron transfer, getting fouled by Hawkins. It was on the continuation from Hawkins getting into the body, and Ali Ali, the transfer from Akron. It's amazing he's on the floor. He's been battling the concussion. And he's finally been cleared, but he hasn't really been able to practice a ton. Yeah, just this week. Able to get into practice. You were kind of joking a little bit with Thad Motti. You had Butler earlier this season. You see Jordan Hawkins heading back into the locker room. This is the first week that Butler's been able to actually play five on five. Yes, that, that's how decimated they've been with injuries. But Ali Ali, a big time player from Ohio a year, excuse me, Akron a year ago, played in the NCAA tournament. Sonogo isolated on Bates. Sonogo with the left hand. Uh, left shoulder, right shoulder, step through, pivots. Really, really good stuff from Sonogo. He's got a dozen points in this first half. Taylor goes right on Jackson. Taylor put it in the first row. Wow, the athleticism from Andre Jackson. Tell you, this guy right here, pound for pound, one of the best athletes in college basketball. Hey, look at the recovery on the ball. And a volleyball spike from Andre Jackson. Jackson's got three points in this game. Get that big three early on. There's a three. That's a play where I think Taylor got a shot blocked by Jackson. Jackson jaws with him, so Taylor wants to get it back right away by shooting a three. Got to be able to handle your emotions a little bit. Jackson, the emotional leader on this UConn team. Newton from the corner off the heel. Great pass there from Jackson. Helped in on the post up for Sonogo, so he skipped it to the opposite corner. Ali Ali for three. Got it. Boy, doesn't look like he's missed the whole season. 40% three-point shooter a year ago. He can do that. How about the lift off the bench? The masked man. Feels like he's been in college yeah. forever. And starting for the Musketeers as well. Ali Ali has Butler within five. UConn used timeout moments ago, coming up on a minute to go in this first half. Sonogo feels the double. A tough shot. Look at Jackson flying in for the offensive rebound. Now Caravan got it back again. Another offensive rebound, but a travel. Dan Hurley cannot believe it. Well, just an amazing offensive rebound initially for Andre Jackson. Take a look. Jackson comes screaming from the weak side and then found a shooter. Let's see if Caravan shuffled his feet as he caught it. It's a close one. Obviously, Danny Hurley disagrees with it. Just but moments ago, you saw him take his eyeballs off the official for the first time. Ali Ali. Feeds Bates. Misses the bunny. That was interesting. The last possession, the first time a double team came with Sunoco. Interesting to see if Butler continues to do that or they're going to mix and match what they do playing single coverage and coming with the post double. Seconds to go. Fancy dribbling here by Taylor. And an offensive foul. A little out of control from Jaden Taylor. Looked like the right call in real time. Taylor just needed to pull the ball out and hold it for the last shot. Here's the problem is Taylor just seemed like he was out of control. And sometimes perception can be reality in the eyes of the official. 
really close whether or not a lean was set. But Taylor needed to pull it out and hold it for the last shot of the half. Taylor picks up his second foul in the process, and now UConn has a chance for the final shot of the first half. Newton slips through. Butler almost came away with it. Got to go. And UConn at the horn. Naheem Ali knocks down the three, and it's an eight-point lead going into the half. Just every loose ball, every deflection, UConn has come up with it. The ball gets deflected, but UConn's able to corral it and then get it to Naheem Aline, the Virginia Tech transfer, who buries a three. It's a big one for momentum heading into the second half. Zad Mata letting the officials hear it just, just cracks at the goal where those offensive rebounds really reveal themselves. And a couple of cold shooting performances from the backcourt for the Bulldogs. Harris, one for six. He's got to get rolling. Eric Hunter Jr., 0 for. He's got to start knocking down the shots if you're Butler. J.D. Taylor, one for five as well. as Lacocious off the mark on his first shot. And it's not like UConn shot the daylights out of it either. Just more opportunities. Good to see Jordan Hawkins back on the floor. He walked off the court with a little, maybe a little with sprained ankle in there. And then pen in screen for him. He misses it. But Butler's done a good job on Hawkins. He only has one three-point attempt for the game. And it was on the first possession of the game. One for five overall from the floor for Hawkins. And now it's Caravan 0 for, 0 for 7. Yeah, unforced there that time from Butler. Seventh turnover for the Bulldogs. Huskies had six in that first 20 minutes. So see Coach Early at a halftime trying to get Hawkins an opportunity to see if he could get him in a rhythm. But now nah, you got to go back to the big fella. Get Sunogo a touch, reestablish him inside. Bates did a nice job on him. Just one foul for Bates in that first half. Got a block to go along with it. And a travel. Tristan Newton got a little out of control. Yeah, you know, for a physical game, there were not a lot of fouls in that first half. You, you knew how the game was officiated was going to be the utmost importance. And that was something Dad Mata told us that shoot around. Well, you know UConn's going to be physical. You gotta match that physicality, but not get caught up in it if you're Butler. Five fouls for UConn, just three personal fouls for Butler. Good help from Sonogo. Now inside the Bates. Bates trying to create space and took too many steps. A good defensive sequence from Sonogo. A, a great edge of the ball screen. He recovers to battle in the post with Bates, just trying to back into a brick wall. And how many times, so strong. How many times, Nick, do you see a big man like that just get a little lazy with his footwork and you get a cheap foul? That's Sonogo. No. Newton makes the extra pass to Hawkins from the wing. Gorgeous. And that's the problem. That's the predicament. Sonogo's busting you up inside. You come with a collapse. You come with help. But Sonogo's able to get it to the opposite side of the floor where you have a knockdown shooter. Just outside the free throw line for Bates. Not to be. Hunter trying to save it. He's out of bounds. And it ends up in a free seat. Here's the extra pass from UConn's pretty offense. Yeah, Sonogo's going to get that post double team. So you have a two and one on the backside. A little extra pass and Hawkins the beneficiary and it's a it's a conundrum what do you do with Sonogo you're gonna play one-on-one -on -one or you're gonna come with a double well, you got a lot of good shooters in the art for UConn take your poison Sonogo right down low over the top of Bates and they're one-on-one -on -one coverage Sonogo scores that's just what makes UConn so tough to guard and really the difference this year UConn's got better three-point shooting surrounding Sonogo that's something Dan Hurley really wanted to go out and get in the transfer portal, and he did. Vissalongo against Newton. 
Try to reach in and take one away from Hunter. It was a great point made by Dan Hurley about being patient in the portal. A lot of times you'll just go into that transfer portal and then just, oh, this guy's available. I got to go get him. He was very patient to go get guys that fit his system. Yeah, and that's it. Fit. They got to fit not only from a tangible standpoint, but an intangible standpoint as well. They got to fit your culture, what you're all about. And Coach Hurley did a great job finding the right guys. UConn's got numbers. Jackson, look out. Whoa, a little double clutch right at the rim. Hunter from three in transition. Bates falls. First points of the second half for Butler. Job by Bates. He deterred the dunk from Jackson on one end, and then he gets the offensive rebound put back on the other. Butler just hasn't had a big guy like Bates in a long time. Jackson for three. And Sinogo again. Another offensive rebound. And a foul that's going to go against Jackson. You mentioned Manny Bates in that motor. It never turns off. It plays it. Both rims defensively altering the dunk from Jackson. And watch Bates sprint the floor. Where Eric Hunter Jr. is going to have a three, but Bates is able to run back into the play. Offensive rebound put back in traffic. Doing it on both ends of the court. That guy is really good player for that Mata. First, second chance points of the game for Butler on that offensive rebound. Just two offensive boards for Butler in the game. Down by 11. He will start making some buckets. And this guy, Harris, got to get going. And he's got a chance to try and convert a three-point play. Just off to a rough start, shooting the ball in that first half. One for six. First real strong, under control drive. Gets Hawkins on his hip and a good jump stop off two feet, powerful, and then finishes. For Jordan Hawkins, that is his third foul. So he heads to the bench. Naheem Aline on the floor for UConn. Maybe this is the spark that Butler needs. Just the fourth free throw attempt for Butler in the game. The previous three came from Ali Ali on that missed three. Towards the tail end of the first half. The main baseline drive. UConn still with plenty of time, nine to shoot. Sonogo. Great help defense. A tie-up, and it's going to stay with UConn. Great help here by Jaden Taylor, forcing the tie-up. Yeah, forcing the crowd. It's going to take more than one. It takes a village to slow down Adama Sonogo. Taylor tying up the big fellow. Tomorrow, all eyes turn to an epic World Cup final on Fox. Messi leads Argentina against winning. Started the year unranked, and they have attracted the attention of the entire country. It's a team, again, number one in the net, number one in Ken Pomeroy. Connor forces a turnover from UConn. Connor ran right into Sonogo and smartly pulled it back out. Bates on Caravan. Extra pass, Hunter. Let his man blow by. Hunter short. Good Pretty job. good look there. Well, what a job by Sonogo to break the rhythm. Chase Hunter off the three-point line. And a foul down low. Looked like that may have gone on Sonogo instead. Looks like Hunter's going to pick up the personal. I got the athleticism from the big man from UConn. Yeah, 6'9", running at you. I thought Hunter could have shot it. But watch Sonogo as he's able to, when the ball goes inside, he's realizing the caravan's kind of hurting. So he's there, 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 looking at the middle of the floor, middle of the floor. On the kick out, he's able to recover and run Hunter off the three-point line. Really good. Just three in the corner this time. Hunter able to keep it in bounds for Butler. Two for seven so far in the second half for UConn's offense. Hunter's got to be ready to shoot, Jeff. Bates. Sonogo picks up the foul. 
It just feels like he catches and he's looking to pass instead of looking to score. Yes, and against a team like UConn, those opportunities to catch and shoot are, are going to be few and far between. And when you get an inch, you got to be able to let it rip. Bates at the line, 70% free throw shooter, makes the first. Join Fox Supports, a nonprofit partner, Sports Biz Camps, in giving the gift of opportunity this holiday season by providing underrepresented students access to fulfilling careers in the sports industry. Visit sportsbizcamps.com to learn more. Carabin needed it. It's been a rough shooting night, but he's staying confident. A lot of good action there. Ball got reverse side to side. In rhythm, Carabin drills it. That shot wouldn't know he was over his first no. seven. The coach is great. Feed and a block on the weak side. Tristan Newton chased him down. Now in the corner. A lead for three. What a sequence from the two transfers. Newton gets beaten up back door and is able to block it. Then Aileen has really come off the bench and provided a big spark for UConn. And him and with nine off the bench. It's a but gets the crowd back into it a little bit. Good pass from Jaden Taylor and Jackson. Not enough to slow down Mr. Manny Bates on the dunk. And Bates converts on that three-point play. Back to a 10-point deficit for the Bulldogs. Bates now with 10. Newton for three. Hunter driving. Hunter. And a whistle. They're going to count the bucket. I think they got Jackson Jeff shoving Manny Bates as Manny Bates just rocked Jackson on a screen as Eric Hunter Jr. was driving into the lane and Jackson took exception to it. So watch, so watch this drive. Jackson's going to get hammered by a screen and then Jackson's going to retaliate here. With that arm extended, that left hand extended. Official saw it the whole time. That's the third on Andre Jackson. Brings Klingon on the floor. Some frustration here from Jackson. Well, that was a that was a grown man screen yes. too for Manny Bates. And you don't expect to get hit by a screen on penetration. You know, when on the perimeter you think it's potentially coming, but Hunter's driving and all of a sudden, wham, you get hit. This is a key sequence in yes. this ball game where you counted the bucket on the previous possession. Now you get the basketball back. So it's so important to there's a fine line between being physical but understanding that it's always the second guy that gets caught in those sort of situations and Jackson needed to control his emotions just a little bit there the coach is on the curl now Bates over the top of Klingon short Klingon now with six rebounds in just four minutes. Newton trying to go coast to coast and a foul on his drive. And we're starting to see the physicality show here. I mean, there's a grand total of eight fouls combined between the two teams. UConn's got six already at the 13.03 mark. Free throws the rest of the way for Butler. And there were only eight combined fouls in the first half combined. So it's really the, the refs are starting to Pull the whistle a little more. A lean on the drive, lost it. Clinging on Bates. Goes baseline in the reverse. Not all drop steps are created equal. His steps are a little bigger than other guys' steps. <laughs> Clinging the spin and goes the opposite 
outside of the rim. He is huge in person. This is a freshman from Connecticut. Bates over the top of him. Nothing he could do. Fresh 20 now for Butler. Ali Ali fades away too strong, flinging another board. Yeah, Aaron. Outlet pass and a turnover. But take a look at this, Jeff. Flinging seven foot two. Look at this drop step baseline. Leans on Manny Bates. He's able to step and get all of the opposite side of the rim from the left block. That is impressive. It's a guy who played in high school at 295 pounds. He's shed almost 40 pounds since coming to campus. It makes a difference. Off of Klingon. It's going to stay with Butler. It away. It's going to stay with UConn. UConn basketball. Bring an absolutely altered Chuck Harris's jump shot on the other end. I, the bench for UConn has been tremendous. You know about the depth, but they've really needed guys like Nahim Aleen and Klingon to come in and make a difference, and they have. The scary part is they're getting close to getting Samson Johnson back. Yes. He's got the boot off of his foot. Just a couple of days ago, probably a couple of weeks away, but that is another big piece. And the corner three, Caravan. Another offensive rebound for UConn. Any 50-50 loose ball, UConn's gotten all of them in the game. 16 offensive rebounds now for the Huskies. Aline drives right hand, no, Bates pulls it down. Could have shot the jump shot and said he drove it into base. Harris, well good. I like it. Harris seems like he's more determined to get to the rim in this half. for the Bulldogs at home. Folks in Indy not too pleased. Well, maybe proving their draft stock because of it, but Barge has come back in NFL history today. Look at the rebounding margin. UConn plus 19. Yeah, neither team has shot the ball well, but the difference is UConn's just been able to track down more offensive rebounding opportunities. Oh, inside great off of the out-of-bounds. Those so special situations. This is a difficult lineup. We got Hawkins, Calcaterra, and Caravan on the floor. A lot of shooters spacing it. A great back screen. Ali Ali inside now. Manny Bates up and under. Tough. Good step through on Klingon. This lineup's got a lot of shooting on the floor for UConn. Got a couple of. Two 40% guys and a 50% guy in Calcaterra. Hawkins fades away. And Butler, if they're going to go on a run, it's going to have to go against this type of lineup inside. Bates! What a pass from Lacocious. See a lot more of this from Simons Lukosius. The vision has been unlocked this year. First, it starts with the hard drive and a little razzle dazzle. He sucks Klingon with him and then drops it to his running mate. Had a very similar play at Cal that resulted in a dunk. This one, a little jump hook. And the crowd is back into this thing at Hinkle. The thing is, it's not just for flash either. It's perfect body position and the only way that pass can be delivered. There's Harris on the way in.
Kremen. Just basketball in general. Yeah. Not a bad word could be said about Louis or from anybody. No. Guy synonymous with the Big East. He's the 2003 Big East Coach of the Year. He's first team All Big East as a player. And then we are in Indianapolis. He played for the Pacers yep. for a couple of years and obviously really shined with the New York Knicks. But just a basketball guy through and through will be missed. Our thoughts are with his family. And this game's turned out to be a good one. Under 10 minutes to go. Four point game. Sonogo back on the floor for UConn. That run was when he was on the bench. So he's got to get reestablished. Manny Bates did a really good job fighting him there for a high low. Sonogo tries his hand at a three and he buries it. Huge. Hasn't taken a bunch. Just his eighth made three on the year. But He's expanding his game a little bit. Boy, his team really needed that one. 40% from three for Sonogo now. Ali Ali turnaround jumper. Ooh, in and out. Ali has provided a huge boost off the bench. His first game at Butler. Calcaterra fades away. And Sonogo's going to pick up a cheap foul there. His third. This is Sonogo. This is going to be part of his game at the next level. Yep. And you're not going to take a bunch of them, but that one. Shot clock winding down in rhythm. That's a shot you got to take. And again, his team really needed it. This place was really starting to explode. A good Butler run. Dan Early calls timeout. And then your star shines in a big spot when his team needed it. Did pick up that third foul, and Butler's going to be shooting free throws from here on out. One and one. Harris hits the first, and Butler's 74% free throw shooting team. Harris has had a much better second half. It was one for six in the first half. He's had a better attack mindset instead of settling for jumpers. One out of two at the stripe for Harris. Came in a 90% free throw shooter. But missed just three all year. See that just one free throw attempt all game for UConn. And Bates went around trying to go for the steal, and he gets popped for a personal. That'll be his second. And Jackson's a really good post passer, too. And oftentimes, post passing, it's got to be right away. And when Sonogo pops open, that ball is on time, on target. And Bates has to foul. Hawkins on the floor with three fouls. Hawkins goes right at Bates. Somehow Sonogo again finds his way right to the rack. You talk about clearing real estate. Sonogo is on the right side of the floor, but the jump stop. And he pulls his way to the other side to lay it in. See the discrepancy on the offensive glass. Sonogo with a career high in offensive rebounds now. 12 total in the game. And an offensive foul on Butler. Inside, outside, any way you want it from Adonis Sonogo. Team on the ropes. It's time for the Big East preseason player of the year to come to the rescue. A little triple and a little offensive rebound muscle for two. the ball and then loading up really kind of sinking in and making it look like there's a lot of traffic inside so it's got to be a full team effort to slow down Adama Sinogo because he is starting to take over this game 19 points a dozen rebounds for Sinogo half of the rebounds coming on the offensive glass by the way Manny Bates picked up that last personal he has three now <laughs> And there's Sonogo again. Pocious pulls down the rebound. Great action, a little misdirection, and Sonogo misses the easiest one he's had all night. Ali Ali. Bates from the free throw line. Bates had a great second half on offense. The Bates is going to to work on this end of fighting Sonogo without fouling. Hawkins for three. Oh, what a great shot from Hawkins. Butler makes one mistake. They've been disciplined all game, Jeff. They don't communicate a switch. Hawkins burns them. Second three made by Hawkins in the game. 
UConn five out of eight in this second half from beyond the arc. Harris step back jumper. Oh, most. How many have we seen like that in the second half for Butler? We'd rather see Harris drive it at Hawkins. Hawkins been in foul trouble a little bit. Take it right at him. He's on the floor with three. Hawkins. Sinogo, another offensive rebound. Hawkins now drives and lays it up and in, and a chance for one more. But that's all Adama Sinogo. His team was on the ropes, and he's made so many plays. Knocked down a three, got an offensive rebound, put back there, an offensive rebound, and finds Hawkins. And then Hawkins is able to do the rest. That's a rebound out of his area in traffic. And then Hawkins with the tough finish through the contact. And this game got to within a four-point deficit for Butler. UConn starting to make a run. They have never trailed this season in the second half. Not for one second. It's incredible, isn't it? Could hardly believe it when I saw that stat. You mentioned that Butler run. It abruptly ended when Sonogo came back in. UConn's on a 10-3 run. Hunter. Just hasn't been his night, Jeff. A little cold shooting the ball. Four to five for three. Sonogo. Soft at the cup. Pretty play from Naheem Ali, too. A timeout called by Thad Mata. It's a 7 0 run right now, and Adama Sonogo stopping you, mm -hmm. and you still get buckets. That's Sonogo. There it is with a steal. He is all over the place. That's frustrated with Thad Mata. Call timeout, try and draw something up, can't inbound it. You start to see the frustration on the bench of Butler. Still got time. Needs some stops. Sonogo, his jumper. Man, he just can't stop him. He's got 23. It is Adama Sonogo's world right now. I don't know if he can make that shot a year ago consistently. He knocked down a three there, a little mid-range jumper. Butler's gone over two minutes without a bucket. Lacocious leans in. Great defense. And nothing easy from this defense from UConn. No, just guarding the ball. Take a look at this. Newton might have gotten a shot to the face. Yeah, it, John Gaffney wants to review it. it. Looked like Ali Ali came over and it was a hard slap right around the face. We'll take a look at it. Newton just now getting to his feet. The officials will review the mm. previous play. I think that's going to be flagrant, Jeff. It's read the lips of John Gaffney who's going over to the table the first one then that second one from Ali Ali And they're looking at Ali Ali he's coming in to swipe down on the Head and neck area anything excessive and none because they're true and That's been the story of this game Officials gonna come over and give us an explanation Meets the criteria 24 Explanation from our officials. Yep. Fits the criteria of a flagrant foul. Shot above the head, excessive and unnecessary. So it's going to be two shots for Tristan Newton here. Possession as well as Newton. Not ready to shoot his free throw attempts. Yeah, They've only been two in the game for UConn. This first so Ali Ali assess the flagrant one. And I think that's the right call. It's amazing Ali Ali is out here tonight. So he out, haven't played all year, battling a concussion. He just got cleared a couple days ago for practice. He's come in, provided a lift off for his team.
in the first half in particular, but there just a, you know, his conditioning's probably not where it needs to be, so he's a step slow on the rotation. He kind of swipes at Newton's face. A couple of free throws there by Newton, who's had a tough day shooting the basketball, and just one for seven, but five points, seven rebounds, done a little bit of everything. Butler starting to get a little bit more healthy right as the teeth of the conference play begins. Jackson feeds Sonogo down low. That's a great play where you have Hawkins rolling up the floor and Sonogo rolling to the basket. Quite the conundrum for the defense of how they're handling that. Ali Ali with the runner. Nope. Sonogo with rebound number 14. Jackson into the corner. Hawkins. It feels like every time he lets it go, it's going to go down. Yeah. Just a gorgeous mechanics. Makosha spinning. And he's going to go to the line. Aline picks up the personal. This is such beautiful basketball this is. here in this two-man game. Well, watch. Hawkins is replacing up the floor. So Hunter is in a tough spot. Is he staying with Hawkins? Because he's got to help on the roll. He stays with Hawkins, who's a 40% three-point shooter, and Sonogo is able to catch and finish. But it's all made possible because Jackson has great vision and knows what he's looking at in that pick-roll-replace action. Lukosius makes the first. Here's Thomas. Checks in for Butler. Sonogo has been a one-man wrecking crew today. 12 made field goals. 25 points, 14 rebounds. Preseason player of the year in the Big East. What well, was a four-point deficit for Butler. Sonogo came in and he put the Huskies on his back. The crowd was rolling, Butler was rolling, and Sonogo just came in and shut it down. With that big three, and it was all downhill from there. Sonogo on the drive! A man of that size should not be able to move that way. What a performance, Jeff. You're not talking about a guy who's a potential conference player of the year. How about a national player of the year? Trying to stay undefeated. The Huskies and Sonogo rolling here at Inkle. A three-pointer, a mid-range jumper, an offensive rebound putback. Uh, he has done it in a variety of ways, and when his team needed it, he stepped up. At the 9.27 mark, it was a four-point game. He came in, hit a big three, and UConn has outscored Butler 20 to 4 since then. Yeah, and it was rocking in here. And Hinkle was ready to explode. You felt like there was maybe going to be some Hinkle magic. Sonogo was having none of that. Jackson picks up the foul. That's his fourth. Harris is going to go to the line. 321 to go. Listen, UConn, they are playing like the number three team in the country. No doubt. And there's some people who think. This is arguably the best team in the country, period. Again, number one in the net ranking, number one in Ken Palm. Purdue hung on and won earlier today. A little push from Davidson, but UConn is for real. And his team checks all the boxes. They can shoot it. They got a stud inside. They got depth. They're tough. They're old and experienced. And they're well coached by Coach Hurley. Came in number three in the country, number two team in the country lost, Virginia. And Alabama lost today as well. And a jump ball, and it will be Butler basketball. And Houston with a 69-61 win over Virginia earlier today. Gonzaga got the better of Alabama. Kansas beat Indiana. It was a heck of a slate of college hoops today. You're not kidding. Now, Purdue had the battle of the lawyer brothers, Fletcher and Foster. Fletcher, one of the great freshmen in the country. We've been talking about the big man, Donna Sonogo and Donovan Klingon, how good he is with his footwork. Zach Eady at 7 4. He's fun to watch. Uh, Sonogo's, he's a first team All American right now. There's no question about that. 
three by Harris. This has not had the feel for that shot this evening against UConn. Think about some of the studs on the front line in this country. Yeah. It's insane. Hunter Dickinson, Drew Timmy, Armando Baycott, Oscar Shibwe, Zach Eady. But I'm telling you, this guy right here, Adama Sinogo, is right there with all of them. Mm -hmm. Sinogo had a tip by Bates. Coming up on two minutes to go, Harris. And that kind of night for Butler. Had some opportunities, had to take advantage of them. The team that came in shooting better than 50% from the floor all season. They have gone over five minutes without a bucket. Banged up, took himself out of the play. Hawkins beat the shot clock with a dunk. They get Jalen Thomas in for Bates here. Boy, it's just been one thing after another for Butler. Let's take another look at it, see if an ankle, right ankle, just went a little bit. Hopefully, it'll be okay. But that, it's just been one thing after another for Butler. Yeah, this yeah. team has not been able to go five on five in practice until the last week. And so, take a look at that right ankle from Manny Bates. Rolls out a little bit. I know Sonogo is putting up some big numbers today. 27 points and 14 rebounds for the big man. But Bates, for all intents and purposes, did everything he could against him. Yeah, and, and Butler... Butler's going to be a, a, a tough out for people as they get healthier and get Ali Ali back and Jalen Thomas more minutes and they're able to bolster up their depth a little bit. I think this team's got a chance to really make some noise in the Big East as well. Just ran into a buzzsaw on the defensive side of things for UConn and rebounding the ball. UConn was outstanding. And they ran into a superstar in Sonoma. Yeah, 53 rebounds now for UConn. A season high for him. 18 offensive rebounds total. Plus 23. Clinton. Clinton. On the entry pass. Now dishes it out in the corner. To the shoot. Good. California. Rattles it in. What a nickname. The San Diego transfer. It early calls him uh, Joey Calcaterra, Joey California. Delivers the exclamation point for a road win for the Yukon Huskies. Harris got it blocked by Klingon by the end of the season. It'll probably just be a Joey C. As Dan Hurley says, pull it back out. And Yukon can play this one of the final horn. Boy, this was an impressive. Very impressive victory for UConn on the road. Butler got it to within four in the final ten minutes. And Adama Sonogo dominated from there. 27 points for the preseason Big East Player of the Year to go with 14 rebounds. And UConn on the road stays perfect. 12 and 0. Dan Hurley and company look forward to Georgetown coming up. Then a date with Villanova.